For me, I think transparency uh, has kind of come to light because the access to information has become more readily available. Um, of course, you could say it's because of socialization. So people are going to social media, people are expecting more, and companies can hear the voice of their consumer more. So they have a voice where they never had one before, and a voice where other consumers can see it. So I'd say in the last two to three years, our entire way that we work in society, that we work and communicate with each other, not just with businesses, has fundamentally changed. So businesses have to, to keep up with that in order to, to, to reach the customers they want. And I think part of that is making sure that they're, they're open and transparent because people can be in a restaurant. I can go and look at a review in two seconds. I can find out any information I want. And I kind of believe that companies have to be the ones putting the information there and actually being open because if they're not, someone else is just going to come in and, and take that voice from them. So when I was working at GIFGAF, we had a network outage. And uh, it wasn't a full network outage, it was an outage of all the, the mobile um, capabilities like text messaging and phone calls, but data was fine. So we had in our hands this, this uh, you know, problem that we didn't exactly know what was going on, but a lot of people had the ability to complain about it. Um, so we took an approach that I think is one that, that I'd always thought was the way to go. And I'm thankfully the team at GIFGAF like in the, the CEO and all the higher ups really embraced this as well was to be as transparent as possible. So about every 20 to 30 minutes, we'd let people know what was going on. And I mean, everyone, everyone who messaged, everyone had a problem. Like my fingers were hurting by the end of the, the night because we're typing so fast. And the entire team, we had like the, the CMO, we had all of the team, all like everyone was on board messaging and making sure the community understood what was going on. Um, so by the end of the night, when we resolved everything, we said, okay, everyone, really, you know, we're exhausted. We've been talking with you guys until the wee hours. We're going to go to sleep, and then we're going to come back in the morning and let you know what we're going to do about compensation. So lo and behold, we wake up the next morning, and it was incredible. The community had decided on their own accord that because of our transparency and openness and because we were so communicat communicative with them, that they didn't want any money back. They didn't want their, their, any kind of um, reimbursement. They wanted us to give the money to charity. So it was incredible. They decided what charity they wanted to do. We said we we're going to put 10,000 pounds towards a charity. Um, and then we felt, they felt like they'd given back to the community. And we felt like we'd kind of given, given them a little bit more. Um, so I went back through every single message and every single thing from all the customers during the outage. And this was just during the outage. And I figured out that it was 67% positive. 67% positive, that sounds impossible. These guys had no phones. Because we were in there, in the trenches, and going back right away and telling them what the problem was immediately, they actually came back a lot of the time and said, you guys are awesome. You guys are you know, the best company I've ever worked with because you're actually telling us what's going on. And, and I think for me, that is kind of a testament. That was the, the first moment that I'd seen it in action where I thought, this is how you have to do it. We are the ones that tell the story because we are the ones who are there first. And we are letting you in on that because we want to do this together.